across the street and down the ways. Uh, and so be sure that you come to visit us. The original conception of these concerts occurred many years ago. Uh, I am a retired professor from Principia College and every Friday we had music from Davis and Davis also had surroundings of artwork. So if you come to the gallery on the second Tuesday of every month year round now, you can experience the live music of performers from our area. Every month it's a different featured performer or group and we have young people, we have seasoned performers, we have representatives from different arts organizations. So we hope that you will join us for the next concert, which will be at the gallery on the second Tuesday of April. And that will be Cindy Kessler and her students from the Stewart School of Music. Then the May program will be the Treasure Coast Youth Symphony and outstanding performers from that organization. Come June, then we do three concerts, which will start at five o'clock, because in, during the summer, we like to start a little bit earlier. These concerts have been so successful that we have been encouraged to continue to offer them year round. Uh, so I just wanted to say that last Friday, we opened an incredible exhibit. It's entire, uh, entitled Humanity Through the Artist Eye a three-woman perspective, Cheryl Cote, Danuta Rothschild, and Kirsten Stingle. I went to the opening last Friday, and I found it to be truly inspiring to read the stories about these incredible artists and what they have done for humanity, and how one of them, for example, was uh, at age 10 months, lost her sight in one eye, and then now is almost blind in the other eye. And so the creations are dictated by this development in her life, which parallels the great Beethoven with his hearing loss. And to see what this artist has done with uh, overcoming the incredible limitations, it truly is inspiring. So I hope that you will come and see the exhibit at the gallery down near the courthouse. It is located in the old courthouse. The reason I am here today is because Nancy Turrell, our executive director, had to be in another place. And we have to figure out how we can be two places at once. So uh, I am here, and I'm Dr. Marie Jerry Beamish. And in this role today, I am chairman of the Arts Foundation of Martin County. As many of you know, we are embarking on a huge transformational project in our area. We are all well acquainted with the Stewart High School, the old classic Stewart High School that is now 100 years ago when it was built. It is our hope and dream that this will be transformed into a huge cultural center housing music, art, drama, theater, and uh, poetry, and culinary arts, and everything, everything coming into one gigantic hub. This is a project that we are seriously down the road on and we look forward to welcoming you in that venue, hopefully in about three years. In the meantime, today, we are very happy to be here in this beautiful auditorium and celebrating this year this magnificent gift of this gorgeous Steinway Concert Grand. So we ha today have two pianists who are going to be uh, presenting the Sunset Concert at the gallery. One of them is Brandon Glick. Now, most of you know him because he is the music director, pianist, and organist here at St. Mary's Episcopal Church. And then the other pianist is Paul Hamity, who is a classically trained pianist who moved here about four years ago. And they together have enjoyed doing piano four hands, which is what you're going to hear primarily today. Each of them will also perform a solo, and they will tell you about their program. One last uh, announcement. Um, be sure that you are aware that by a simple donation, you can receive this gorgeous magazine quarterly, and it tells you all about everything going on in the arts. And one of the great things that's happening now post-pandemic, we are uh, going to be starting up our cultural excursions again and in July of this summer, 
we will be headed off to Chicago, and we hope that you can join us for that incredible experience of traveling together as passionate lovers of the arts and enjoying what Chicago has to offer. You can go on martinarts.org and find out all about it. So now, I would, I'm happy to introduce to you Brandon Glick and Paul Hamity. Let's give them a royal welcome. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, and thank you again for being here. As you probably know and have heard on the news today, or this month, is, inter is um, International Women's Month, and today is actually International Women's Day. So the next two pieces we're going to perform were composed by women composers, and um, I'm going to tell you about them individually. This first one we're playing is a waltz by Fanny Hensel. She was the sister of Felix Mendelssohn, so Fanny Mendelssohn Hensel. And she was a 19th century German composer and pianist of the Romantic era. Her compositions have included a piano trio, quartets, orchestral overtures, cantatas, etc. And most of this, as you know, went unpublished during her lifetime. She grew up in Berlin and received a thorough musical education from teachers, including her mother, as well as composers Ludwig Berger and Carl Zettler. And of course, Felix Mendelssohn was her younger brother. So please enjoy this waltz. This next piece is entitled Summer Moon, and it was written by 20th century African-American composer, pianist, organist, and teacher, Florence Price. And I'm sure if you turn on any classical music station, 
within a day or so, you could at least hear one of her pieces or not more. Just beautiful, beautiful music that, again, as a female composer, was not really recognized, published, or recorded back in the day. Uh, she was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, educated at the New England Conservatory of Music, and she is noted as the first African-American woman to be recognized as a symphonic composer and was the first to have a composition played by a major orchestra. Price composed over 300 works, four symphonies, four concertos, choral works, uh, plus art songs, music for chamber and solo instruments. And in 2009, a substantial collection of her works and papers were found in her abandoned summer home. This piece that I'm gonna play, Summer Moon, was composed in 1938, about 15 years before she died. And it's influenced by a younger and well-known jazz pianist and social activist, Memory Midget and represents, and I'm quoting here, Price's brilliance in seamless, seamlessly integrating the styles of concert and vernacular repertoires to evoke a post-romantic sound with a jazz influence. So I hope you enjoy this piece.
This next piece uh, by Johannes Brahms is a part of his very last pieces that he wrote for piano. His Opus 18 is a collection of short pieces um, that are just moving, wonderful, um, wonderful music. And uh, one person I was reading after, I hadn't read this before, but he, they said that um, he actually wrote this for Clara Schumann. Have you ever, Marie, have you ever seen that? Or, okay, so. Okay. I trust what Marie says. She said all of the last pieces were written for Clara Schumann. So this is the wife of, uh, of Robert Schumann, and Clara Schumann was a phenomenal composer herself, and every, every once in a while, a, um, an orchestra will come around and play her piano concerto. I think that's about the most popular work um, that she wrote, it seems to be, uh, in, which is just a, a great, great piece of music. And um, so this piece, written for her, I also possibly um, expresses some of the longing um, apparently, possibly, he was in love with Clara, and his, um, Robert died quite young, um, around the age of 30. And I don't believe he ever expressed his love, or at least they, they never married after that. And so these pieces have some longing. I, I kind of imagine, uh, whether I don't think we really know for sure, that he had her in mind, obviously writing for her, but some of that um, maybe angst he felt uh, is in this. So I hope you enjoy this work. It, it really expresses um, beauty and longing. Um, and it's, it's one of those pieces I, I've loved for many years. So uh, here is, here's the great piece by Johannes Brahms. And you should sometime ju just listen to the whole um, the whole Klavierstück, it's, it's uh, the bronze
One more work for you, and it's about as long as all of them so far combined. Uh, <laughs> so this this next piece is is a wonderful work by the kind of classic, probably cl considered classical um, composer, classic era composer uh, Schubert, Franz Schubert. So he. He was born in 1797, passed away in 1828. So again, a very short life. He wrote this in his uh, last year. He composed this in his last year of life, and some friends had it, uh, had it uh, printed. It's not the word I'm thinking, wanting, but published, thank you. Published after his death. So it's, it's a really wonderful piece, and, and I realized I made a mistake. I should have listed the four movements um, for you in the, in the, the guide. Um, so it is four movements, but it's continuous. And so uh, it, 
unlike, you know, a sonata where it's broken up, like the Mozart. Um, you, can, you can relatively tell there are these big, big transitions of sorts, and so we'll go from fast to slow, and so you can, you can kind of hear as that progresses. But it's a, it's a great piece. Um, it, it starts out in, in F minor, and then it, it, it's constantly changing. F sharp minor, and F major, and on and on and on. And I, one of the infuriating things about this piece is, is I'm always forgetting uh, which key I'm in. And so I'm hitting flats when I'm not to, or I, and, uh, and so, because he'll, you'll, you'll see, it's almost, as, as I play this more and more, sometimes it almost comes across as variations. So you'll hear the theme throughout, it'll, it'll come back in various themes coming back again, and, and altered and changed, and so it's, it's a wonderful work I've wanted to perform for many years, so I'm grateful to Paul. And also, I cannot, I cannot continue this without thanking Jeannie Dupel, our wonderful page turner. <laughs> so, thank you to uh, Martin Arts. Thank you, uh, Marie, for asking us to perform on this. And also, if you are interested, there are many other concerts that happen in this venue. So outside, there's an opportunity. If you are interested, you can sign up. Uh, for to receive emails for our concerts and this next Thursday in a week uh, We'll be having harpist Susan uh, Susan Knapp Thomas. I always forget if it's Thomas Knapp or Knapp Thomas, but it's the same person uh, She's a phenomenal harpist. And so she'll be performing in here and it's part of our lunch uh, chamber music series so we set up tables and there's a kitchen back there so we serve lunch and then afterwards, about a 30 to 45 minute chamber concert. And that changes next month. It'll be uh, piano and vocal, and we've done cello and violin and piano. So we change it up. So I hope you can join us for that. There are flyers out there. And that's, that's $20. It includes lunch. And I don't think I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but that's OK. So thank you again to the Martin Arts. Thank you for coming. And please enjoy Schubert's Fantasy in F minor.
Thank you, Brandon, and thank you, Paul. Thank you, it's very exciting, wonderful. And thank you to all of you for being here today. You are an incredible audience, so thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to welcoming you to the gallery next month and for all of the other events that we have going on here as well. Thank you.